All right, guys, one of those videos today of you guys just sit, I talk, ramble about stuff, uh, and uh, just my feelings and opinions uh, going back into this type of style of video. Um, I know recently I've been doing a lot of, you know, inventorying, showing off cards, stuff like that. I know a lot of people like that. I still have to do uh, one last video of my inventory. I'll do that next. You'll probably see that in... Uh, probably the next day or so or even the same day I don't know how when I get out this video but uh, so a couple things I got I got my little notes of what I wanted to talk about um, I guess in in, uh, in the aspect of going toward the end of the year going to 2024 you know I want to redefine or, or relook at my collection goals on what I want to do you know the whole like new year new me new me type of deal uh, but I, I do want to give a, um, a period of time for reflection on okay especially for my businesses uh, with my e-commerce business which is the collectibles business and my hobby obviously uh, but also with the media production business and where I want to be professionally in my professional career but part of that is where I want to be with my collection goals. Just like everybody who's probably reassessing that right now or reassessing on a daily basis, like myself, who who tends to overthink a lot of things really, really, really uh, a lot. So um, <clears throat> on that aspect, you know, where I want to, uh, where I want my business to be and what my inventory wants to look like and where I want to put my time and effort into uh, this business. Because at the end of the day, yes, it is a hobby, obviously, uh, but it is a somewhat source of inventory or a source of income for my hobby, you know, you know how it is. Um, that's like that uh, dichotomy of, of this hobby of you want to collect as, as much as you can or you want to, you know, value or, or uh, you know, accumulate the things that you uh, find a lot of value in, but also to get a lot of the higher end cards and everything you have to let go some cards and, and bring some other cards in to get those higher end cards. Uh, so anyway, for me, <coughs> Um, for the longest time, I've been trying to complete a full Poncho Pikachu PSA 10, Poncho Pikachu set. Um, I'm close. I have, uh, I've accumulated all the, <clears throat> almost all the half arts except the dang uh, Dedenny and Charizard uh, card. I'll put a picture right here. Uh, it is so very hard to, accum to, to acquire that card because how it was given out. Uh, technically, technically, the two 284, 285 card, um, XY-P, uh, those promos are actually quote unquote more rare than this other Dedenny promo, Charizard and Dedenny, but for some reason the Dedenny and Charizard promo is more valuable. Um, I think it's because of how it was distributed, but I, I, I don't really understand that, it, where there's less PSA copies of this other card, uh, but it's worth less than this whatever I, I don't know but anyway so uh that's my last half art and then the full arts i need the both rayquazas both charizards um and is that it uh oh yeah i need a uh well i'll probably not get this a mario mario Pika, uh, pikachu mario psa 10 as well have a psa 9 uh but you know i'm not mm, you know I, i'm not full set on getting all the psa 10s like in every single 10 i haven't like i said i have a 9 so i'm not like too hard set on that like i have to have this 10 versus a 9 i'll have a 9 it's fine eventually i'll probably upgrade to a 10 sell the 9 you know how it is uh but um eventually i do want to have a full psa 10 set so i can just you know set it aside or you know i love I love the set. the The reason I'm I'm, I'm collecting all the Poncho Pikachu's is because the set identity. You know, you can call the Poncho Pikachu's a set, but in essence, they are a um, a period of time in Pokemon that was just uh, that was like iconic, just like the Gold Stars or just like um, the the you know E series. Uh, they were they were a unique set identity that nothing really comes close to them. Um, in, in, in today's terms, I guess we have kind of similar, kind of like Van Gogh Pikachu, but that's kind of more like the pretend Pikachus instead of the Poncho Pikachus, because specifically the Poncho Pikachu was Pikachu dressing up as other Pokemon, and that hasn't really happened outside of the Poncho Pikachu era. Um, you know, obviously we have, and in essence, you can, 
in that in that verbiage in that categorization you can kind of sense that okay well the mario luigi pikachus the, those aren't po those aren't pacho pikachus technically because they're not dressing up as you know other pokemon and i understand yes yes uh in essence in that definition yes that that wouldn't classify them as pacho pikachus but for simplicity's sake, uh, I am because those cards are freaking cool. So, um, but anyway, like I said, there hasn't been a really era, and I, I think it is going to become an era where it's just gone. You know, it's left and gone, and those cards, even though there uh, there are a lot of them out there, a lot of people kind of just hold them to their uh, to themselves uh, uh, pretty pretty frequently, and 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 they don't let them go uh, pretty frequently at, at, at the same time. So, in essence, I'm trying to collect those before they're unobtainable anymore. You know, in, in something unattainable in the fact that they just keep going up in value. Um, I thought they would come down a little bit more than they had um, because of, obviously, the whole spike in J Japanese cards and everything. I thought they'd come back down with a lot of the other cards, but they've, they've held out. They've held out a little bit, a little bit higher. You know, maybe come down like 40 you know, they, they shot up twice in value and maybe come down maybe 30% of that 100%, sh you know, <clears throat> shot up, you know, times two, you know, whatever. But um, they haven't really come down all the way. And, uh, you know, I'm probably just have to bite the bullet to, to buy those because <clears throat> a lot of the cards that uh, a lot of the grails that, you know, I eventually want to complete just like the two, uh, um, 285 and 26 or 285. 4 and 285 I was able to acquire raw and then grade but that was very very rare um, I actually got um, I, I think in total I bought six of those cards three of each raw that I thought they were very good candidates for PSA 10s came out they can had a little bit of dents on them and uh, th uh, sold one uh, I graded three those came out eights and the other two were tens uh, so thankfully, the other twos didn't have those dings. They were good, uh, and they were really, really uh, the PSC 10 candidate, and I sent them off, and they got 10s, thankfully, because those things are pretty high up there in price. They're like $2,500 each uh, for those cards. Uh, but again, I want to have a complete set of the Punch Pikachus. That's one of my goals. Uh, the other goal that I do have is the Munch Pikachu set. Our Munch set. Uh, I've acquired all the high-end cards except for the Rallet. The Rallet is the most obtainable, the easiest to obtain. So I'm probably going to finish that goal here soon. Um, I just not really quick to it because it's it's Rallet. You know, it's been $300 forever, so I, I don't think it's going to go up anytime soon. So I'll just pick it up when I pick it up. Probably some guy on Facebook at a collect con or, or whatever. So, um, but I did pick up the EV, the side duck, as well as the rallet. I was able to grade the the Pikachu's, and I both got tens on them. So I have an extra Pikachu. So probably just keep uh, keep that in the collection. But anyway, those are my um, collection goals. I have. Um, you know, with any type of collector, you look a little bit further. Like, oh man, I could have this. Oh man, I could have that. You can become too spread out, where then you just lo lose focus of like, okay, what are you actually collecting? You know, I want to have a set identity, a collection identity of like, you know, you know, sweet spots of of my collection. This is my collection of this. This is my collection of that. And I want to um, have you know my personal collection, and then everything else, uh, ev everything else is kind of like over uh, turning over on itself, as in like selling, getting raw cards, grading them, selling. Uh, but those are my kind of collection goals. Like I said, you, uh, I have been spread out like, oh man, I could have a crystal set, a uh, full PSA 9 set. I could have a full, uh, you know, uh, gold star set and everything. But um, I just need to focus and hone in on exactly what my collection goals are and, and, and what they are not and, and what they need to be type of thing. So I, I have I have a pretty good idea of, of what they um, obviously set to find as the Munch and then the Punch Pikachu, but uh, eventually those will be fulfilled before I, hopefully I, I, obviously I can knock those out before I can go on and, and do other uh, collection goals or whatever. Um, so kind of taking this time at the end of the year to uh, flesh that out. My other uh, two collection goals uh, that I have 
uh, kind of figured out and want to do and continue on 2024 is a meet other collectors. Um, I'm in a space where I'm a lot of my um, interaction between collectors and between um, between the people that are in the hobby is online. I want to kind of try to shift that more in uh, in person type of deal because I think there's a lot more value to be had in talking face to face with people uh, instead of talking to them virtually. And, and obviously this is a medium that I can use to uh, not only show off the cards and, and express the knowledge behind the cards and, and connect to people that way, but you know, it's only a one way conversation. Obviously, you are a camera uh, in my in my eyes, uh, and I, I don't want that to be. I, I want to actually talk to you guys and, and have a, a community. Uh, uh, but I, I want to uh, you know meet people in real life, and you know I'm I'm located in Georgia, and I know there are collectors in Georgia that are have the, the same type of drive, same type of uh, passion that I do, uh, and I want to uh, connect with those people in in Georgia, and also. Um, on top of that, I want to go to uh, more collect cons and more conventions and meet more people because this type of hobby, obviously, it's not like sports hobby where everyone and their mother is into sports and everything. Pokemon is a very kind of niche and this, especially the stuff that I'm interested in, which is the Japanese exclusive type of stuff. It's, 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 it, it's niche of a niche and it's good in some aspects where I, you know, I, I can hone in on the knowledge base and really soak all that up and it is it isn't just an enormous amount of stuff that I'm soaking up uh, and I can be a subject man a subject uh, matter um, professional subject matter on that uh, area and um, I can have a, a horizon of okay I study this up till this and I can acquire all the knowledge in that uh, but at the same time again <clears throat> finding people locally obviously um, to to share the the you know passions that I have and everything it, it's a lot harder to do so uh, so again that's my other is to go to more conventions meet more people hone in my my collection goals of this year and continue the next year and next, I wanted to talk about uh, the, you know, since my last video, I don't know if, uh, how many of you have actually seen it. It's, uh, it's all about the um, uh, uh, acquirement of all those cards that I got in Tucson, Arizona. And I just got all the PSA cards back and everything. I was going over the grades, going over the cards and, and showing them all off. I recently posted a majority of them on eBay. There's some that I didn't post yet because I've actually hit my max um, on eBay of, of listing per month. I should probably get into a habit of requesting a higher limit every single month, but I haven't, so I have to wait till next month. Uh, but anyway, I'll, uh, posting them and, and, you know, with with um, with uh, listings, you always want to have a, in some aspect, um, offers, you know, offers on and have limitations there you don't want someone sending you a dollar offer on like a fifteen hundred dollar card obviously because that's super annoying but i maybe go down like 30 20 percent than my top listing because a lot of my cards that i don't really want to move which is my like top of the top which is like my crystal charizard i have at like twelve thousand nine hundred ninety nine obviously is is way over the the recent sold the recent sold is probably around like seven six thousand dollars something like that um, but that's again, this is just a showcase. I, I want people to come into my, um, you know, my eBay store, look at all the other stuff I have, all kind of stuff. I'm not really inclined to move that card as I am a, a celebrations Umbreon gold star, you know. Um, <clears throat> but uh, it, it just goes to show posting all those cards and everything, it just goes to show how freaking liquid uh, Charizard cards are. Um, Man, I've all this whole stack right here <clears throat> in the time that I posted them uh, yesterday. I think it was yesterday night, yesterday midday. I posted all these Charizards, and every single one of them, even though I <clears throat> put a pretty high price on them, I went down like 20 30 percent on best offers. And all of them I've gotten this was posted for uh, $7.99, I got an offer for $700. 
Uh, this one was posted, I, I don't know, remember the offers. Some of them come to mind, but um, yeah, so Dark Charizard first edition had offers, Shining Charizard had an offer, CD Charizard had an offer, uh, uh, Charizard 1999 uh, Unlimited had an offer, um, you know, Legendary Collection Charizard had an offer of, I think it was $2,000, something like that. Yeah, it was $2,000. I had it for $3,000. Obviously, Crystal Charizard had an offer. Um, as, again, I do not want to let this go. Uh, it is, <clears throat> like I said, the, in my eyes, I know a lot of people think the artwork is goofy and all that kind of stuff, but I really admire the artwork, obviously, by um, Koki Saito, and uh, I just love the style of E-Series and, and all that kind of stuff, and accumulated to the holographic and everything of this card. Um, Awesome, I can't I can't say enough about Crystal Charizard and then obviously Plasma Storm Charizard All these have had an offer and I've not even had the listings up for 24 hours um, So that just goes to show and that's like a, a heavy set like not even any of these other cards Obviously, I mean they're we're in a quote-unquote buyer's market and a lot of people are liquidating their cards to move into higher-end cards and you can have something like you know $800 or you can have something like, you know, six thousand uh, dollars type of deal, and uh, other people just have different, uh, you know, their whole whole inventory or whole collection could be worth six thousand dollars just trying to move everything, liquidate it all, and buy one big card. You know, that's just uh, I think eventually that's any collector's normal progression is is consolidation and you know getting bigger cards, more rare cards, exclusive cards and kind of just having one big collection and that's uh i i see that uh, normals uh, normalized throughout my collection goals as well through my experience in the hobby i've come to realize that if you can put yourself in a position where in times that are tough to liquidate cards or times that are tough where we're technically right now in a you know buyer's market where you know cards that are kind of lower end cards like you know like a core core promo that was mass produced you know uh, I've come to realize that if you don't have to sell then it's much better if you sat on the product versus just liquidating it really fast. Um, if you can put yourself in a position like that, you'll be head over shoulders than someone who's over leveraged on their credit card, who has debts to pay, and that in generally need to liquidate fast. That has maybe a few hundred dollars in their bank account, and they have you know ten thousand dollars worth of cards uh, that they you know need. And something pops up, something comes up, they need to sell really fast. You're you're in way better position if you can put yourself in that position. Uh, and I would say, you know, before you start any of these collection goals, before I started any of this, you know, uh, Pancho Pikachu. Uh, collection goal that probably minimum to complete it needs probably at least like a oh man <laughs> at least like 40 grand just like sitting around um, and you know I made sure okay is this something that I want to do you know do I want to just put that much money into something and just have it sit and I can let that set a lot of people can't a lot of people you need to reassess you know okay you know is this money best utilized in plastic <laughs> in plastic and on your shelf versus food on the table versus a, you know a roof over your head versus a car to get you to work to actually get you more money and this is a whole like life lesson thing you know make sure you're your you yourself are financially stable and not rela relying ch uh, on um, uh, uh, check by check I've I, for a brief time I was a financial advisor and I'm, I'm in the world of finance um, and it, the, the numbers are scary the numbers are so scary nowadays of like how little people save 
So I was in the world of finance uh, for a considerable amount of time, and I, I still am in a sense. I was a, a financial advisor for, for a specific amount of time before I kind of moved away from that area. Uh, but the statistics on Americans and their savings is just atrocious. It's it's crazy. I mean, I'm looking at statistics right now, and the things that I've, 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 I've uh, remembered uh, back when I was doing all that kind of stuff, it's even worse today. Today's savings rate is about 3%. The last time it was at 3% or even close to that was right before 2008 in the, in the, in the crash. And it's just the Americans. Amer you know, Americans just love to spend. They actually, it's nowadays it's called doom spending, where a lot of millennials and a lot of you know, young people are literally just spending money left and right um, it, just to cope, I guess, with these... Uh, how the economy is shaking out and how you know people are still trying to live their life how they lived it for the past you know whatever years uh but it's very interesting nowadays but it's very scary you know more than half of americans just in general just in general more than half americans have less than five thousand dollars in their bank account about 40 percent 40, 30 to 40 percent of them have less than a thousand dollars in their bank account <laughs> please if you are a person that's in that realm please don't have like a trip to the doctor or you know a trip to the mechanic cost you your entire savings please if you are collecting cardboard and you are collecting these cards please have a built up six month expenditure in your bank account before you go and spend all you can and have a psa 10 cent of, of munch pikachu or whatever um just you know you don't want to you know have one like i said trip to the er one trip to the mechanic you know bankrupt your entire family type of thing and you have to liquidate these cards really fast because i mean you're you you do have the aspect of these cards are liquidable if you put your money in right if you put your money like you know anything for views uh that guy uh oh what's his name uh oh my gosh i forgot his name oh Oh, uh, whatever. You know, Max and anything reviews. He bought, uh, I remember a time he bought the special delivery Charizard before it came out, uh, where it was before re released to the public. And it was just whispers. And he bought one of the, you know, one of the cards that, uh, you know, walked out the door type of thing. I think he spent like 10 grand on it or something. Just freaking ridiculous. And now, you know, in a PSA 10, that card's worth 50 bucks or a hundred bucks or whatever, because they came out and released it. You don't want to make mistakes like that, obviously. But I mean, he's, you know, has tons of money, whatever. It doesn't really matter to him. Uh, but please, if you're someone who follows me and listens to my advice and everything, I am very uh, financial, uh, financially focused. As you know, my channel, I do a lot of numbers, do a lot of return R R ROI, do a lot of, you know, spreadsheets. Please have at least six months and you need to go on a pen and paper, six months of expenditure, write it all out. You can listen to Dave Ramsey, all that kind of stuff. Write it all out, six months of, you know, your bills, uh, your, your food bill, your, you know, electricity bill, your rent, all that, write it all out, six months, have that in a bank account. Not, a, you know, it's for anything. If anything happens, you go to the mechanic, you go to the doctors, whatever. Um, but please <clears throat> have that in your bank account safe. You know, I have it just not touched in my bank account. For me, six months of expenditure is around 10 grand. For some people who live in New York, it's probably 50 grand. I'm a very disciplined individual and I live way below my means. I, I don't drive a fancy car. I don't, you know, uh, rent a crazy house you know somewhere uh but wow um i've been rambling on forever uh if you want to know more please put it in the comments like yeah tell me more finance stuff you know i know it's really boring for a lot of people but you know your money is your life that, that's what it is it's the lifeblood of just living uh, obviously, you know, you can be in a box on the street or whatever, but to support people and everything, you have to have money coming in, uh, and obviously in essence, money going out, uh, through, you know, living. So, uh, again, huge ramble. Um, but hopefully that was helpful for, for some people and maybe a kick in the butt of like, Oh, maybe I need to save more, uh, and, and not spend, you know, my months, uh, uh my months paycheck on, on cardboard. So 
anyway, I'm again, I'm in a very, very, uh, you want to be in a very, very, um, uh, a very very good position where you can say I don't want to sell you know whatever your offer is um, you know I don't want to sell and in in essence for a lot of these rare rare cards like some of these Charizard cards um, I, I don't see them you know we we were down we're way down below the 2020 hype the hype was up here for English especially way down below here you can see a chart online TCG fish a poster right here where a lot of these cards they are this could be the you know the low period this is the bottom of the market quote unquote um, it's a really good time to actually put money into into these high-end cards that ha that were you know 20 X like you know in 2023 years ago um, but for me, being a seller, I'm looking at that like, man, if I don't really need to sell the money, or I don't want to sell the cards for money, you know, I can I can um, withstand the period of time where I just don't have to sell, and I'll sell, keep selling my, uh, you know, Chinese Lily Box uh, promos that uh, you know that that'll sell for on eBay. Um, that I you know have a lot of these, and I just don't uh, you know don't. Uh, I have what I need and I can sell the extras where I don't have, uh, you know, I have one Plasma Storm Charizard in A9. So anyway, that's a really good position for you to be in. Uh, and that is the position that everyone, of anybody, everybody who's watching me, I want every one of you guys to be in that position uh, that you can uh, fulfill your collection goals. And at the same time, you don't have to sell the cards that are very, very rare to get and potentially could go up in value over uh, over a period of time. So um, with that, I'll, I'll end it here for this, for this subject. More on the final finance realm but again if you're more interested on the finance realm of like oh wow that was very interesting i want to hear more about that please let me know in the comments uh hopefully this was a little insightful for you uh but i i don't want anybody to be bankrupt by by shiny children's cardboard okay you know that's not not my, my ideal i don't want to push on you like oh you need a gamble gamble of all these you know cards you want to rip them dip them whatever and you want to you know 5x your money I, I i don't want that for anybody uh because that is very very toxic and 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 and, and destructive uh besides the gambling, degenerate gambling, like like you know some sports cards are, uh, as well as obviously going to casinos and everything. That is as destructive as I would say alcohol, because alcohol you can destroy your life over alcohol. Um, but anyway, uh, uh, preaching over. Um, but I'll I'll catch you guys in the next one. <laughs> See ya.